Allow me to introduce Barb Risha. She's the speaker for this evening. Barbara runs the day-to-day -day operation on Walcott Street, while Dave works as an IT professional um, during the day at a large bank, and after hours is the jack of all trades to keep the farm going. Um, Barb and Dave have three sons, Nathan, Cameron, and Max, who have grown with the business, and they have Baxter, an older German short hair pointer, who completes the family. Barbara has a degree in chemistry and an MBA. Um, she has the most interesting background, and if you have a chance a little later, ask her about her time in Africa and teaching farmers how to raise fish. She enjoys the outdoors and skiing, and her retirement plan is to travel across the USA in an airstream. That's true. It's my goal. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, I got to use this. Okay. Okay. Good evening, and thanks for having me. I've never used one of these before. So, um, so Stowe Greenhouses is the name of the business. We are transitioning the name to Field and Vase by Stowe Greenhouses. We feel it's more representative of who we are uh, because we're a farm, but we're also a floral design center. And everybody confuses us with Stowe Gardens. So we're sort of transitioning our name. So we're a 14-acre flower farm located on Walcott Street in Stowe. We're almost in Hudson. We grow over 80 varieties of flowers, and we cut over half a million stems a year. So we're a farm. We're not a garden. We, you know, people get confused. They're like, oh my god, when they walk in. We grow in a sustainable manner. We grow year-round. And we purchased the farm um, in December 2010. So we're on our seventh year. So these are just some photos we grow outside. The property is 14 acres. We have about three acres outside. We grow inside, and in, these are hoop houses. They're plastic, covered in plastic. These are dahlias. Uh, one of our hoop houses is heated, and one is not heated. And then we have a greenhouse that's about an acre in size, 36,000 square feet. Highly automated. There's only five of us in the wintertime that run the place. Um, there's fans that come on automatically when it gets too hot. The windows vent when it gets too hot. We have a curtain that closes with the sun to keep the heat in, to keep the sun out. We, um, if you come, the tables are very, very close together. And you can get through, but it's too hard to walk in and cut the flowers. So they rotate mm -hmm. around. We stand in one place, and the flowers come to us, and we cut them. This is a, these are lysianthus that are growing right here. So we have different varieties that we grow year round. We're family owned as a, um, as my introducer um, mentioned, we have three boys. Cameron's at UVM, a junior. I have Max and Nathan. They're in high school at Neshoba right now. This picture, Dave and I. Um, so, um, I was born and raised in Pennsylvania. We've been in Stowe since 94. Um, I have a BA in chemistry from Holy Cross, an MBA from Northeastern, and I'm farming. So I don't really have a background in farming. Um, we saw Dave and I decided to make a change in lifestyle. When we bought the farm, it was for sale. Dave's gone back to his old lifestyle, and I'm, I'm still here. So I run the day to day. Those are zinnias that I'm holding. So that's Dave working on the boiler. Um, he does work in high tech during the day, but he does everything else, electrician, plumbing, carpenter, all around handy guy. Since we bought the business, we've grown uh, our sales 27%. Two th we bought it in December, so I start with 2011. And our bottom line has improved by 42% since we bought it. This one's a little hard to read, but I just wanted to put it up. When we first bought the business, oops, that doesn't work, does it? This um, is wholesale. So when we bought it, it was primarily a wholesale business, and their primary flower that they grew were lilies. 
We still grow a lot of lilies, that's our specialty, but now this is our wholesale point right here. Um, so it went down considerably. And what, this is farmer's markets when we first started, this is now farmer's market. Our biggest thing is the Boston public market. Oh, how does that work? It's a laser pointer. Oh, just push it? Oh, yeah. So that little part, like a cat torture thing, um, is the Boston public market. I don't know if you've had a chance to go down to the Boston public market. It's been open a couple years. It's above the Haymarket Tea Station right on the Greenway. Um, and it's a year-round market that specializes in New England grown or manufactured products. And we're the flower shop there. So that's a picture of a lily. That's what we used to grow the mo uh, most of. We still grow a lot of lilies, 300,000 stems a year. Um, but we grow a lot of other um, things. So as I mentioned, um, the farm, yeah. Year round, we have five full-time employees and four part-time year round. In the summertime, we, we have about 10 kids that work for us, um, mostly outside, mostly weeding. <laughs> but they keep coming back, so I guess it's fun. And then we have nine retail employees that work down at the public market or in some of our farmers market. And this was the crew from last Mother's Day. Mother's Day is our biggest holiday. Um, so we were all a, a little giddy at that point. We have sustainable growing practices. We have integrated pest management system, which means we use uh, bugs to kill bugs. So we have hornets, and, um, a wasp to get rid of aphids. We have cats instead of rat poison. Um, we have a biomass heating system. Biomass means wood chips. So we have a special relationship with all the um, arborists, the town of Stowe, Hudson Light and Power. They can drop off their wood chips for free. They don't have to pay to dump them. We stockpile them, and then that's how we heat our boiler. We don't, and, and this past year, because it was somewhat mild, we, did, we had no heating cost. Um, prior to us buying it, probably, the business was established in the mid 80s, not in this form, but they used oil heat and they had to convert. There's, you, can't, you can't survive um, with oil heat. Um, so in addition to, oh, so a couple more things sustainable. We drip irrigate, so that's how we survived last winter's um, drought. We have a pond and it would have gone dry. Drip irrigation means you just drip it along a tape as, a lot, as opposed to overhead watering, which wastes a lot of water. And then we reuse all our soil. We steam it, we mix it in compost, and we use it again. So we try to be as responsible as possible in being good stewards of the land. So I mentioned in addition to um, a farm, we're a full service floral design studio, and we also offer classes. All right, so we did a class. This was one on, that came from Tower Hill, a woman um, brought a group from Tower Hill. We went and picked in the uh, fields, and then this is my back porch. But I do them everywhere. I go to people's um, events. I have a whole series that I do it uh, for the Mass Horticulture Society at West Elm. I do a lot in downtown Boston as well. I go to Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital. We do a lot of classes. Um, so where can you buy our flowers? At the Boston Public Market. We have six farmers markets, mostly not around here. Um, so let's see, we're in, we have Ducopoly Square, we're up in Newburyport, um, Brookline. We sell out of our farm cooler, which is why we don't do any farmer's markets around here. It's self-serve, you walk in, it's a little scary the first time, but after that, it's, you just walk in and you pick what you want and you put the money in the uh, self-serve kind of mailbox on the wall and uh, that's how that works. Um, we sell to floral designers, a few local retail stores. Lenny at Colonial Spirits carries them. They carry them at Verrill. Um, we're talking to the new Whole Foods in Sudbury that's going to be opening in June. So we, we're, we do a few local stores. Um, White Flower Farm, if you're familiar with that catalog, if you order lilies from them, they, we drop ship them. They send us the order and they come right out of here with their name on it. Um, and then a new thing for us is there's Amazon Fresh is starting in the Boston area where you can order your groceries on Amazon and they deliver them and you can buy our flowers through them as well. This is a, <laughs> there's me, a picture, this is an ad for the Boston Public Market from last year. 
This is a holiday market that we did in downtown Boston, just a picture of a farmer's market. And then we do a lot of weddings. This one's at the Lyman Estate. I just have a few. This is one of my favorite parts, is doing the weddings. This was up in New Hampshire. Uh, that was down in Rhode Island somewhere, I forget. Our first one of the year is uh, Saturday, and then I have them every weekend uh, through the end of November. So we get really busy. It, we start, yeah. So I just like to give a little bit of education um, about where our current flowers in the United States come from. 75% of the flowers sold in the United States come from outside of the United States. Uh, this did not always happen. Um, in 1992, the US created the Andean Trade Promotion and Drug Eradication Act and basically eliminated all the tariffs on imported flowers from South America. They wanted people to grow, they wanted farmers to grow things besides cocaine, basically. Um, and so that didn't really stop them from growing cocaine, but what it did was it put a lot of flower farmers in the United States out of business because we couldn't compete on price. The regulations in South America regarding pesticides, uh, workers' rights, workers' wages are not what they are in the United States. Um, the other problem with getting them from South America or other places is the carbon footprint to get them here. They cut them, they truck them, they treat them, uh, they package them with a lot of uh, different packaging, and so the carbon footprint is very high. So local flowers. So flowers, we cut them today, we bring them to market tomorrow. People always, always say to me, oh my god, your flowers last so long. That's because they were cut one day and you have them the next day. When you buy them at grocery store, Trader Joe's, or even from a florist, they have been cut for at least seven to 10 days. So of course they're gonna die in two to three days because the flower is only gonna last 10 to 14 days. Because they get on the airplane or they get on the truck, they come to, they fly to the United States, they get to their, where they come in, they go to the wholesaler, then they go to the distribution center, then they get to your store. So ours lasts longer. We grow much more sustainably. Um, Flowers have been bred for the longest face life, and so that means breeding out fragrance. So if you grow snapdragons in your own garden, they're gonna smell way better than if you bought them at the grocery store. Um, and then you, they're grown by a local farmer who's part of the community and um, trying to be a good steward of the land. So challenges we face as a small local business competition from lower cost sources, such as the grocery stores. Cash flow, it's always a problem for small businesses. We, we are able to keep our prices low, and we, do ch we, uh, we charge less in our cooler than we do at, at other places because there's no, there's, no there's no one to help you. I mean, obviously, if you come around the corner, we're going to help you, but, um, but there's no middleman. There's not, you're not paying all those people along the way, which is why we can keep our flowers at a good cost, a good price. Um, we're economy dependent. Flowers are disposable income. The economy is on its way up. In 2010, when we bought it, it was not. So I think that's helped us. Um, Work-life balance, I work way too much. It's always a problem with a, um, small businesses. And then New England weather is always one of our challenges. So this was, this was two years ago. This is Hank Kranz. <laughs> he worked for us. We're shoveling off the roofs. We shoveled so much because there was so much snow on our roofs. The snow was so high, our windows couldn't open. We had to keep the windows open to get, it was, it was awful. It was, it was just awful. So market advantages, we have high quality products. Um, as with food, people are becoming more aware of where their flowers are coming. The whole food to table movement is very strong. It's now spilling over into flowers. And we're one of the very few um, flower farmers that can grow year round in New England. And that's the last picture. Those are some sunflowers in our field. Oh, thank you. All right, does anyone have any questions? You must have a generator in case the power goes out, right? We do. We have a gas power generator, um, and we also have gas backup um, in case. We, we haven't had to use it for a couple years, but, but we, um, our lily bulbs especially, we buy a container a year from Holland, and we get them frozen, and we keep them frozen. So. In the summertime, if the power goes out, you can't lose all the bulbs. In the wintertime, if the power goes out, then you would lose all the flowers. So you had a pond. Did the pond didn't go dry last year. No, because we were able to. We drip irrigated, so we were able to keep it. Yeah, 
Yeah, we unfort some farm, and we're fairly small compared to a lot of farms who had to choose which crops to let die last year because there was not enough water. So, what do you use for a soil medium? <laughs> so, in the greenhouse, we use coir coconut fiber. So we buy pallets of the of this block and we water it and ex, exp, it expands and then we mix it with the compost so we compost all our spent leaves and um, we have a nice rich mix that we let and then we so we mix the two together and you say you uh, steam it we, you have to sterilize the soil. we sterilize our soil yeah so after we grow the lilies which are perennials but we only grow them once we don't have time to let the the uh, foliage die down and re-nourish the bulb so we we toss it we dump our soil we screen it and get all of those out and then we compost that and then we get these piles of of old dirt and we cover it with a tarp and then we pipe steam into it and so it kills all the microbes and then we mix it again with new compost and we use it How many people work for you? So five full-time at the farm, um, four part-time, two of those are drivers, and then we have about 10 kids that work for us during the summer. So with the high school boys, it's sort of been a nice continuous mix. And now we always have way more kids that want to work for us than, than we can accommodate. Um, I found the more kids you get, the less work they do, so we've got to kind of keep it <laughs> at a manageable le level. <laughs> So. How did you learn about farming? It sounds like you didn't know a lot about it when you I it. did not. I was a backyard gardener, an avid backyard gardener, but um, not. I was a gardener. I was not a farmer. Um, it was on-the-job training. It was, uh, it, the first couple years were kind of, we made a lot of mistakes. Hopefully we didn't make the, the same mistakes over. And the flora side of things, too, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, <laughs> and I prayed really hard for my first wedding that nothing fell apart. Um, but then I've, I went back to school a couple years ago to a floral um, design class in Boston, a 12-week class, and learned the techniques. So, um, so now I'm, I'm fairly confident. I mean, we still make mistakes, but we try not, like I said, to make the same ones. And it's so weather dependent. You just, you know, you can only control nature so much. How do you stack your uh, plants? Do you use seeds, plugs? Yeah, so right now, so we started about 1,500 trays of seedlings. So we have them jammed everywhere. We have them in the greenhouse. One of our, that's why we heated, just last year we put heat into one of our hoop houses so that we could start seeds and keep them out there. We do not plant until Mother's Day or the first full moon after the beginning of May. So it's May 10th this year. You plant everything, you don't buy, buy plugs. We do buy some plugs. Some seeds are hard to germinate. And then we will buy some seeds towards the end of the um, summer to put back into the greenhouse because we're so busy that we don't we we can't keep up with the seeding. So we'll buy a few. We'll buy some at the end. We have corms, so things like ranunculus and anemone. They uh, a corm is a little, it's a big seed sort of. If you uh, it's a little bulb kind of thing. So we'll buy those kind of things. But oops, sorry. Um, but mostly seeds. It's a lot less expensive. Yeah. Anything else? You going to be at uh, Spring Fest? Me personally, I'm going to come have a sausage. The company. Oh, the company? <laughs> uh, uh, no, I don't think we're going to be there. We'll come and get a sausage. Okay, all right. <laughs> we, we were there in the very beginning, um, but we haven't been there for a few years. So. All right, well, thank you again. It was very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What's up? I want to say something. <laughs>